today's show, we kick off Hispanic Heritage Month, keep school stress-free for kids, and... Jimmy, Jimmy, what are, what are you trying to do here? Prevent pitfalls in your workout. Let's go under those curls. Shoulders back, boom, knock them out. Plus, see what's hot on TV this fall. I hope she loves you as much as I do. But up first, how to save money on your credit cards. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And at this point, paying with cash feels like a relic from the past. When we buy things, we typically pull out the plastic. That's right, but credit card interest rates are pushing 18%. Wow. So, you know, it doesn't take long to rack up an overwhelming pile of debt. So, Jackie Denker is showing us how to pay down those cards now to help us beat inflation. And that's our featured story at the top of the list. A swipe here, a swipe there. Many consumers are relying on their credit cards more than ever to support their everyday spending, from gas to groceries to just the daily necessities. We're borrowing more just to keep up with rising prices. And Shazia Virgi, the GM of credit services at Credit Sesame, says that debt is becoming more expensive to carry. The Fed is taking aggressive action to cool inflation by increasing interest rates. Now, when interest rates increase, that means that the variable APRs on your credit cards are also going to increase, and you're going to see your debt rise more quickly than it did before. She says your top financial priority should be making a dent in that debt. The first tip, choose your payoff method. The two most popular are called the debt snowball method and the debt avalanche. Depending on your finances and motivation, one may work better than the other. With each one, you'll pay the minimum balance on all your credit cards but one. With the snowball method, you focus any extra cash you have on the smallest debt first, then the next, rolling through your debt like a snowball. It really does provide that spark and momentum that some consumers need in order to not be so scared of that large balance that awaits them at the end. Now, the avalanche method is a bit different because that's going to be about organizing your debt from highest to lowest interest rate. Regardless of the balance, with this method, you'll tackle the highest interest rate first. But this takes a little longer until you finally see it all tumble down. I still think that the avalanche method is the best way to save on interest, especially during this environment. Interest is your biggest enemy. Next. A good strategy if you're looking to pay off your debt in a more timely manner is through a balance transfer offer. You're basically trying to take your highest interest debt and transfer it to a new card with 0% APR for a fixed amount of time. Sometimes it could be up to 21 months. And that means for 21 months, you won't pay interest on your balance, which is great because you could take all the money that you would have paid on your interest, consider that as savings, and then use that to pay down your balance faster. This next strategy is hard to do, but it works if you ignore the perks. While it's nice to have a card that offers rewards, those rewards are largely worthless if the cost of carrying a balance and having a high interest rate eat into the rewards of your card. To earn rewards, oftentimes you have to spend anywhere from a few hundred to thousands in the first few months, which can be harder to pay off in the long run. And finally, you don't have to avoid using the card. Switching to cash, it really depends. If you if you feel like you're gonna be tempted to spend beyond your means with a credit card, then you may wanna revert to cash for the short term while you're still figuring out your debt repayment plan. But if you have started to get to a place where you can pay off what you spend, you'll wanna keep building your credit score. Credit cards are a good alternative to cash because they provide that additional purchase protection as well. Pay off credit card debt to beat inflation is on the top of the list. It seems like every week there's a new fitness trend popping up on social media and while some may be legit, others are just new for the sake of being new. So we're putting a few of the latest trends to the test. You can get tied up in knots trying to keep up with the latest social media fitness trends. When I'm online, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, I see a lot of very flashy, cool looking moves that look great for camera. Are they doing anything? Well, you said it just right. It's great for camera. Fitness and nutrition expert Joey Thurman's flexing on social media moves that work better for the algorithm than they do for your health. There's some movements that are rooted in science and some that are just rooted in social media. 
First up, chair dips. I know people love doing dips, so it's goes going to oh, a dip. I've seen this. Okay, now what just happened here, your shoulders are coming forward. Yeah. We don't pull our shoulder blades back, so we've got this sheer stress on the shoulder drive up, and it's not even really that great for the tricep. So we can do something much easier for the tricep. It's called a push-up. Yes, the classic push-up's all you need to hit your tries. Drop down okay. into a push-up where your hands go, let's go a little bit closer, so bring them in a little bit tighter. Now, abs tight, control down, and we're tucking the elbows back a little bit. Back. There you go, come down, now drive up, boom. That's it, control down, drive up. He's still working the triceps, he's still working the shoulders, but he's able to get that natural scapular retraction and movement as he's coming down. Do five sets of 10 to 15 reps. Next, featherweights putting the dumb in dumbbells. How many of these curls do you think it would take for you to actually feel your biceps? At this rate, it's gonna take 40, 50, It's because these are very light. Instead, Joey says to go with a slightly heavier weight with lower reps to accomplish the same results of lean muscle. Grab these 20 pound weights right behind you here. All right. Now, let's go into those curls. Shoulders back, boom, knock them out. Let's go. Oh, oh dear Lord. Oh. How many of these <laughs> is this gonna take you to feel it? I'm already feeling you're, it, you're, but I bet you I could probably maybe max out at like 10. See, you, you knock out 10, a good rep range, 10 to 15, if you wanna get the most out of it. The goal is to get more tension and more stress on the working muscles in less time. So it's forced to adapt, burn calories, burn fat, and add muscle tissue. Finally, the glute kick. Jimmy, what are, what are you trying to do here? An Instagram post? That might look good for Instagram, but that's terrible for your glutes. He suggests the bench step up, drive up on one leg, then come down slow and controlled. We're getting a better contraction, and that's what you want, more efficiency in the gym. Do five sets of 10 to 15 reps on each side. Forget the likes and work out like a pro. Hispanic Heritage Month starts today. And as the resident Latina, I am so very proud of the many contributions made by our community. But of those many contributions, can we please agree that food is pretty close to the top? So let's fill up on some delicious Latin delicacies. Nothing brings people together like a homemade meal. I really wanted to take you through the scope and range of what Hispanic food means taste and look like. We spoke to Maricel Salazar, Latinx food writer, host, and cook. She shares three recipes for you to enjoy in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. First, chilequiles, a traditional Mexican breakfast dish with a twist. Rather than using tortillas in our chilequiles, I have swapped it out for plantains or platanos. You'll also need salsa, eggs, adobo powder, and your choice of toppings. First, we're going to warm a large pan on the stove, medium-high heat, then pour a generous glug of olive oil, add some diced garlic. Once your garlic is fragrant, add some adobo powder. Cook your eggs halfway and keep on low. Add the plantain chips, cook until heated through a little bit soft and remove from heat. Add your choice of salsa, then add your toppings. Refry pinto beans for even more meatiness without having the meat. Some red onion for a little bit of color, diced spring onion, diced avocado, cotija cheese, and beautifully slivered radishes. Next, we are bringing the family to the dinner table with Cuban pasta salad. Oh, in Espanol, ensalada de coditos. You'll need bow tie pasta, mayo, Dijon mustard, white vinegar, tomato, bell peppers, red onion, and diced ham. First, boil, cook, drain, and rinse the pasta. Then get started on your salsa. What I've done is taken half a cup of mayo, one to two tablespoons Dijon mustard, and one tablespoon white vinegar, whisked it all together, that's it. And we're going to take our cooled and drained pasta, put it into a very big bowl, add your dressing and all of your toppings. Give it a really, really good mix until thoroughly coated. Let cool in the fridge for 30 minutes, then enjoy. And finally, no celebration is complete without dessert. Countries like Argentina and Uruguay actually fight for who created dulce de leche first. To make these, you will need a box brownie mix and dulce de leche. To start, prepare your favorite box brownie mix accordingly. Add the dulce de leche on top of our brownie batter. Bake for 40 to 45 minutes and enjoy. For the full recipes, head to thelisttv.com. Buen provecho to meals you can enjoy in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. Still to come on the list, 
You're a free man. New TV shows you won't want to miss. A bit of a blast from the past, literally. And why kids need a mental health checkup. It's important to teach your child that it's okay to say no. Plus, how one barber is cutting hair for those in need. How do you feel? Okay. Good. All that and more next. YouTube, I'm interrupting this episode of The List with breaking news. If you subscribe and turn on notifications, you'll never miss a minute of The List. I'm pretty sure we already knew that. You see, this right here is why I didn't go into traditional news. All right, back to the show. Welcome back, folks. School is back in session, and that means new routines, new teachers, new classes, new classmates. Jimmy, I will tell you, it is tough on us parents. <laughs> well... Imagine how tough it feels for the kids actually experiencing it. The pressure that comes with all that change can be rough, so Teresa Strasser is here to share some ways kids can manage their mental health. A recent Deloitte study showed that more than half of American parents are concerned for their kids' mental health. While this might seem alarming, the experts call it a blessing in disguise. I think that the level of concern just kind of helps with defeating the stigma that mental health is a taboo topic that shouldn't be discussed. Leanna Stockard, a licensed family therapist from Life Stance Health, has some ways we can talk to school-aged kids about the mental health topics that affect many of them, starting with transition jitters. I believe that the first step is just kind of checking in with your child to just make sure that you understand what they're feeling nervous about, whether they're going into a new school or a new grade. Be involved in that transition with them. It's also a good time to point out they aren't alone. Their peers may be feeling the same way. Everyone's experiencing this new thing for the first time and, you know, transitions can be scary. Leanna also likes the buddy system, whether it's an old friend, a sibling, or even a teacher to help them navigate the newness. So they feel like they have like a person that they can trust, they can lean on and have just right by their side through the transition. Next up is how to deal with social media and cyberbullying. She says it starts with the basics. Setting parental controls, knowing their passwords, having access to their social media, but then also let them know that with access to a smartphone can come cyberbullying. This can come in the form of negative online comments, making fun of their clothing, or spreading rumors that aren't true. Assure them that you are there for them and on their side about it. I think it's important, too, to communicate to your kids the other side of the coin, or if they're engaging in these behaviors as well. We'll wrap with wrangling peer pressure, where confidence is key for kiddos. It's important to teach your child that it's okay to say no. At home, you can model this by validating to your child that they don't need to do the things that they feel uncomfortable with. Leanna suggests teaching them that their intuition is almost always right. Pay attention to and listen to their feelings, especially the feelings in their gut. That's a very good indication that we feel uncomfortable with something or that we feel like we should leave. For more mental health tips, check out lifestance.com and their companion YouTube channel. Keeping our kids on course, taking care of their mental health. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. These stories feature people who did just that and they'll remind you that kindness always wins. First up, a couple who spent years flower bombing the streets of San Francisco. Every day we go out and we ride around and we find neglected patches of dirt and we put our positive intent towards nature, planting native wildflowers. Shalico and Phoenix McGee document their excursions on their SF in Bloom TikTok account which has blossomed and now has over 350,000 followers. Native wildflowers aren't just pretty to look at, they're essential contributors to our ecosystem and the pollinators around us, which are in decline. Their videos are also educational, so you can learn all about gardening or how to get started doing some flower bombing in your area. Love this idea. At number two, a barber using his skills to look out for his community. How do you feel? Okay. Good. Damon Turk was a special education teacher for over a decade, but during the pandemic, he decided to pursue a different passion, cutting hair. He now owns a mobile barber shop that provides at-home services for those with special needs. Children, adults, um, really anyone with, with sensory difficulties, um, you know, sometimes it's a challenge uh, to, to go to the barber shop. 
the waiting, the loud noises. If you need a break, let me know, okay? As many families as I can help, the, um, the better. His shop runs on donations and currently serves 11 counties around Ohio. To learn more, visit the Mobile Barber Facebook page. And wrapping up our kindness wins list are two Massachusetts-based sisters who've gone above and beyond to uplift isolated and lonely seniors. We've been able to make something incredibly positive out of 2020, which was a pretty tough year for everyone. Saffron and Shreya Patel started writing letters to residents of assisted living facilities and care homes back in 2020. And all of them are written on this beautiful yeah. stationery. An idea that took off and is now the sole mission of their nonprofit, Letters Against Isolation, which now reaches seniors from all over the globe and is currently close to reaching half a million handwritten letters. Letters Against Isolation has achieved so much more than we could have possibly imagined. Their efforts are ongoing, and if you'd like to support their cause, visit lettersagainstisolation.com. Incredible stuff. And those are three stories that show kindness wins. And coming up, fall is right around the corner. So we're helping you kick it off right with some brand new TV shows. We're highlighting three of them when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back, friends. All right, on today's watch list, the most exciting time to be a TV fan is in September when a whole lot of new shows hit our screens. Hattie Dijamal looks at a few of the big premieres worth checking out. I get to be me. American Gigolo. Quantum Leap. Did it arrive? Sean Nolan. People are going to start to talk. Oh, let him talk. And the Rookie Feds. We've already looked ahead and we've selected these shows as the hottest, most anticipated shows that you should check out this fall. Jacqueline Coley, editor at Rotten Tomatoes, is taking us through her picks for the upcoming TV season. <laughs> All three might look familiar because two are reboots and one is a spinoff. Business is good. You make women blossom. They need you. A sexy thriller is first on our watch list, American Gigolo. It's a reboot of a popular 80s movie. John Barenthal is incredible, and just the glimpse we've seen from the trailer, you can expect a lot of sex, a lot of violence, and a man on a mission to try and reclaim who he is. Barenthal goes to prison for a murder he didn't commit. DNA results came back conclusive. You're a free man. Rosie O'Donnell returns to Showtime as Detective Sunday to piece together a murder case that she thought was solved. American Gigolo is streaming on Showtime. Next on our list, Quantum Leap. A bit of a blast from the past, literally. The 1980s and 90s show that starred Scott Bakula is getting a reboot which will premiere on Peacock. It's been about 30 years since Dr. Sam Beckett stepped into the Quantum Leap accelerator and vanished. <laughs> Now, a team will restart the project in hopes of understanding the mysteries behind the machine and the man who created it. Quantum Leap premieres Monday night on NBC or stream it on Peacock. Finally, the rookie feds. This time around, rather than a later in life rookie police officer, as is in the Nathan Fillion. I was just the oldest rookie on the LAPD. We have a rookie late in life federal officer played by Nisi Nash. I'm the oldest trainee at the academy. At 48 years old, this rookie achieves her dream of becoming an FBI agent. And the fact that I'm here should scare the hell out of you. The interesting thing about this particular spinoff of the rookies is because they are going into the federal side of things, the cases are going to get bigger, the stakes are going to get higher. My daughter said, you saved her life. And she saved mine. The Rookie Feds premieres September 27th on ABC and streams on Hulu. I hope she loves you as much as I do. Three shows that were so loved, they're back. This fall on the watch list. Those are fun, and I guess what's old is new again, which is good news for us oldies. Oh, speak for yourself. But yeah, everything seems to be either a prequel, a reboot, or a spinoff. Okay, well, how about this? Speaking of spinoffs, how's this for a pitch? Instead of friends, no friends. It's about men that don't have any friends. Harsh? Not according to a new study. That's last on our list. Next. Welcome back, friends.
friends, it is time for what's last on our list. Now, Jimmy, can you count your deep lifelong friendships on one hand? I can count them on one finger. My college roommate, Richie Rich. Uh, known him for a long time. He lives far away, so I don't see him much anymore, though. Well, Jimmy, it sounds like you might be the casualty of what's being called the friendship recession. And it seems to be hitting men the hardest. Now, according to Vox, men have fewer friends than ever. And it is harming their health. Okay, I have been sneezing lately. Jimmy, no, that's just allergies. <laughs> Research shows men's social isolation can actually result in high blood pressure, heart disease, inflammation, and even worse. Okay, well, the young American men are living with their parents longer and making fewer friends outside the home, and they're working more hours, which doesn't lend itself to a lot of bro time. Yeah, and men also have a hard time being vulnerable, sharing their feelings with friends, and that's actually what really makes deep connections between people. They also say that unlike women, Men don't say, I love you, to their friends enough. So, Jimmy, when was the last time you told Richie that you love him? Probably never. But do you really say that to your friends? Yes, I say that to my friends all the time. <laughs> like, at the end of every conversation, hi, love you, bye. Okay, women are so on the nose, it's kind of sickening. There's some avoidance happening here. You need to tell Richie no. that you love him. No. Do it. No. Do it. Fine, Richie, I love you. And if you didn't already know that, you're an idiot. How's that? Was that hard, Jimmy? Yes, it was really hard. Jimmy, there might be other reasons that you don't have many friends. <laughs> we will deep dive that another time. Friends, that is what's last on our list. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. YouTube, I love you. See, I can say it. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. That's why I love you. And just in case you're watching on the so-called Web 3.0 and you have on virtual reality goggles and they're all fired up and ready to go, let's test out our new immersive list experience. I'm reaching out. And I got your nose. Okay, to get your nose back, like this video, leave us a comment, and that's right, this is blackmail after all. You're gonna have to subscribe. Did you do it? Okay, here's your nose back. There you go. Oh, and here's some new episodes to immerse yourself in. Keep the goggles on.